Welcome to the UC San Diego Shiley Marcos Alzheimer's Disease Research Center Brain Blast series. My name is James Brewer, and I'm the director of the UC San Diego Department of Neurosciences and the Shiley Marcos Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. I'm a professor of neurology, a clinical neurologist, and a brain imaging researcher. I'm pleased to present to you our virtual Brain Blast series. Each of the talks included in the series have been created by Shiley Marcos ADRC colleagues with expertise in brain aging research that focuses on prevention, detection, diagnosis, and treatment of Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. Each of the experts featured in the series studies a unique aspect of brain aging and has developed a brief overview of their current research to highlight the state-of-the-art work that's going on here at UCSD and our center. We hope you'll take advantage of this free resource to learn more about the advances in brain aging, the importance of research, and the multitude of opportunities to get involved and participate in research studies. Hello, I'm Fiza Singh, a scientist, professor, and psychiatrist at the UCSD School of Medicine. Today, I will be talking to you about an EEG-guided training program to improve working memory in those folks who suffer from a mild cognitive impairment. MCI, or mild cognitive impairment, is characterized by abnormalities on memory tests in a laboratory setting. These individuals do not have any significant functional impairments in their everyday lives. However, MCI is a high risk state for developing Alzheimer's disorder. For example, compared to the general population where the incidence of AD is one to 2% a year, the incidence of AD can be as high as 15% in those who suffer with mild cognitive impairment. So as you can see, that makes it a really important time point for disease modifying interventions. Despite these facts, currently, there are no FDA approved treatments for MCI. In the last decade, what we have learned, however, is that coordinated activity in the frontal parts of the brain is critical for memory. And some of this new information has informed our ability to create new treatment programs. So for example, the neural circuits that are located in the frontal part of the brain are especially important for working memory. Working memory is a flexible and fluid memory space where we can hold and manipulate information to facilitate our everyday lives. So for example, imagine working in the kitchen with a recipe. You may decide at the last second to either double the recipe or may need to make some substitutions. Those type of quick calculations and changes require the use of working memory. Another example is trying to remember a phone number before you have a chance to go enter it into your contacts and so again, having to hold that information in our brain space requires the use of working memory. So as you can see, something along the lines of working memory is pretty important for us to function every day. And it does seem to be impaired in folks with mild cognitive impairment. So this is an important treatment target. So EEG, the text and records our brain's electrical signals from the scalp. Neurofeedback is a really interesting methodology that then takes that brain activity and makes it available as a visual metaphor that can be viewed on a computer screen. So for example, we can link brain activity to the flying of a plane. If the brain is doing what it should be doing and has been pre-specified to do, then you will see that plane flying really well. On the other hand, if the plane stops flying, then it lets us know that the brain is no longer doing the activity it should be doing. And it's a reminder to change that brain activity. So as you can see in this way, neurofeedback teaches an individual to control his or her brain activity. This can be used to improve cognitive performance, regulate stress levels, 
emotional functioning and behavior. This technique has been used successfully many times to improve depression, anxiety, and most notably, ADHD symptoms in children. So in our current study, we're going to be using EEG to collect brain activity data from the scalp. It's going to be shown in the form of a visual metaphor or a game on a computer screen. And the subject is then going to modify that activity by using their own self-regulatory controls. And this is a double-blind placebo-controlled study. So there's an equal chance of being in the active or placebo group. Anyone who's 50 years or older and has mild cognitive impairment is eligible. And they will come in twice weekly for training for about 30 to 45 minutes. This will be over 12 weeks and we will have follow-up visits at the end of the study at one month and three months. Um, the study is being conducted at the UCSD Medical Center. Uh, it's on weekdays during business hours. We are able to reimburse parking fees and transportation is provided for those who need it. There will be paper and pencil memory tests and computerized memory tests before, during, and after the treatment completion. In terms of what we expect to find, first of all, this is a unique study and really is the first study of its kind. This is the very first NIH funded study of gamma neurofeedback in individuals with mild cognitive impairment. We hope to show that this type of treatment is safe and well tolerated and that it leads to improvements in our brain's ability to handle information and changes the way that information flows through the brain. We also hope to show that there are improvements in memory, especially in working memory. Now, another aim of the project is to find whether these changes sustain even after the completion of treatment. And so we hope that these changes will continue to be present at the one and three month marks after the treatment has ended. If successful, we hope to test this treatment in other forms of Alzheimer's disease, for example, in the more moderate forms of that illness. And most importantly, we hope that this can inspire and bring some hope for those families and individuals who have been suffering and struggling with this most devastating disorder of Alzheimer's. Here is a picture, as you can see, uh, of a Zoom call. <laughs> These days we're all doing Zoom. So here's a, a, an image of all the folks in the laboratory. And um, we would love to have anyone who has a uh, any mild cognitive impairments or memory deficits that they've noticed in themselves, if you know of a family member, if you have friends, anyone at all that you think might be struggling with uh, changes in their memory, please feel free to contact us. We always need volunteers for research and you can either email us at this email address listed here or feel free to give us a call. Thank you so much for your attention. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation from our UC San Diego Shiley Marcos Alzheimer's Disease Research Center Virtual Brain Blast series. Please look for other presentations in this series and share them with your communities. We hope that you'll also consider participating with, in brain research studies. We always have new opportunities for participation and are actively seeking individuals 65 and older without memory disorders, as well as those with a diagnosis of mild cognitive impairment or Alzheimer's disease and related dementias, such as frontotemporal dementia, Lewy body dementia, and Parkinson's dementia, as well as others. We're also proud to have a bilingual, bicultural team who conducts studies, visits in Spanish. Your participation can make a real difference for future generations. Please click on the description below to complete the very brief survey about the presentation you just viewed. And for those who are interested and who live in San Diego, we'll be happy to contact you. Simply provide your contact information on the secure survey. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.